let's look at different configurations in which tri-state buffers can be set up. The first configuration is you have the conventional tri-state buffer. So A, enable and F. So you take the true table, enable A and F. So when enable is 0, F is Z, that is high impedance. And when enable is 1, your F is equals to A, so that's 0, 1. And we know that this is A active high tri-state buffer. Now let's look at another configuration in which it can be used. You have A, tri-state buffer with an inverter. You have enable and then F. As you can see, this performs as a NOT gate. So the true table is enable A and F, enable 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Again, when enable is 0, your circuit acts as open circuit, therefore it is a high impedance state. And when enable is 1, F is the not of A. So you get 1 here and 0 here. Let's look at the third combination, which is A, F, and here the enable is active low. So this is known as a active low tri-state buffer. So when I say active low it means that a 0 will act, make it act as a buffer and a 1 will make it act as an open circuit. So the true table is enable a f 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. When enable is 0, it acts as a buffer. So F is 0 and F is 1. And when enable is a 1, it acts as open circuit or a high impedance state. This is a active load tri-state buffer. And the fourth combination is an active low inverter. So you have A inverter F a buffer with enable so you can take the true table enable A and F four combinations so we know that it's an active low uh, tri-state buffer so when enable is 1 you get a high impedance state and when enable is 0, F is not of A. So in this case, since enable is 0 and A is 0, your F is 1. And since enable is 0 and A is 1, your F is 0. So these are several configurations in which tri-state buffers are typically used.